Hi, my name is Ian Enox. I'm an associate scientist at the University of Miami and NOAA's AOML lab. I'm going to be talking to you and showing you a new Future Reefs lab that we've built here at the University of Miami and the Rosenstiel School of Marine and Atmospheric Science. This lab allows us to look at a lot of future conditions that will be impacting coral reefs and to look at how corals might respond to those conditions. As anthropogenic carbon dioxide rises in the atmosphere, it also rises in the ocean because the atmosphere is constantly in contact with the ocean. And rising carbon dioxide or CO2 in the ocean actually makes the ocean a little bit more acidic um, for the, uh, all the organisms that live there, the animals and plants. High CO2 and ocean acidifications affects coral reefs through primarily two different pathways. Um, it slows down coral growth and corals form kind of the backbone of, of, the, of the coral reef. To start with, we're going to be looking at the um, ESA listed or endangered coral Acropora cervicornis. This is a, the staghorn coral. One of the things that we're really able to do with this lab is really control uh, carbonate chemistry to a very high level. It really allows us to dial in the, the very specific conditions, but also to change those conditions you know, over time. In the first year of this, this laboratory's operation, we're going to be focusing on a cropper cervicornis, the endangered staghorn coral. And this study was really uh, funded and supported, as well as this lab, by OAR's omics initiative. And this is to look at, specifically with respect to our lab, the molecular mechanisms of coral resilience. So we had a good source of incoming seawater from the Bear Cut, which is just the north end of Biscayne Bay. And it goes through a settling tank and goes through sand filters. And then eventually it comes into this lab and we also get, we also filter it there as well. So we filter it down to one micron to try and get rid of as much of the particulates and biologics as possible. And then we put them in these large vats and we bubble it with low CO2 air to try and bring it down to pre-industrial levels. And then this water is what is used in the 16 tanks around the, the lab. These are our experimental tanks. Uh, we have 16 of them. They're all identical and they're set up and layout. Uh, and the idea here is basically to provide a somewhat natural environment, you know, as much as possible for whatever organisms are going to be inside these tanks, while still being able to uh, control the parameters of the water as precisely and accurately and exactly as we want them to be.